and welcome back to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl and Wealth Transformation. The purpose of our show is to raise the consciousness and healing with your relationship with wealth and currency and apply unconditional love. Our guest this evening is Frederick Luskin. This is the second segment with Fred Luskin and continuing our discussion from part one. Hello, Fred. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Some of the stuff that I deal with is forgiving oneself for having made mistakes. So when you talk about wealth, a lot of stuff that people struggle with is financial failure, financial ruin, um, failed investments, stupid job decisions, not seeing... Trusting the wrong people with your money. Trusting the wrong people <laughs> with your money. Not knowing which company, you know, somebody decided to work for X and turned down a job from Facebook. <laughs> there, there, there are so many ways that we can beat, each, beat ourselves up. So one of the aspects that I see forgiveness related to wealth is to be able to absorb the pain of having made bad decisions at times. What do you mean absorb? Um, forgiveness is the quality of taking anger or self-pity about something and kind of re-metabolizing it so it's just what happened. Yeah, right. It's and, just, then, and then letting it go. It's just it. That's it. It's just what is. Or using it not to make the same mistake again. Exactly. So that's reabsorbing the negative okay. emotion. It's okay. like, here I'm like this, now I'm like this. That's the manifestation of forgiveness. It, unforgiveness is almost yeah. always tight. Yeah. Restrictive. Yeah. Restrictive, exactly. Right. And it's, mm. and then it can be, it is. And so the, I, well, I, I think I was just saying that we reabsorb that energy. Oh, okay. To heal it. To heal. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And I think that goes with anything, you know, that when you're hurt, yeah. it's reabsorbing. Okay. That, that, that would that, be that my totally. guess. Okay. So, do you think it's important to forgive yourself, like like for a financial situation, um, to forgive yourself first? I mean, if somebody if somebody did something that was really evil, or, mm -hmm. you know, the, you I like for myself, I trusted someone that I shouldn't have trusted mm -hmm. in, and I got scammed. That what? I got scammed. Ooh. So I trusted the wrong person. Right. And, you know, in my practice, I, you know, have, wow. I must forgive that person because that person, even though that person's evil, That's true. I have to forgive that person to set myself free. Right. But the hardest thing for me has been to forgive myself because I made that choice. And, right. and, and then I go back to not trusting myself. Right. The, the one thing I would suggest in that conceptualization, conceptualization there aren't that many people who are evil. Yeah, I, but I, there are people yeah, who act, act in evil ways, yeah. and and some I people agree. may be evil towards you because they stole your money, but they might come home and be very loving to their children. So, I mean, I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah, I've t I've one one of the things that I used to talk about because I wanted people not to be so judgmental was that if there was a room of a thousand cows if they were having like a cow convention. <laughs> Adolf Hitler would be welcome with no problem because he was a vegetarian. <laughs> so he didn't harm, I mean he harmed cows when he bombed everybody, right, but right. he personally didn't eat animals. And yet there's a lot of people who are self-respecting who eat animals who would be a grave threat to cows. Mm -hmm. And so there's a sense of like how personally you take it and and a judgment based on limited information. Now, I'm not excusing Adolf Hitler's behavior. I'm just saying that we tend to call evil that which affects us. Well, it's acts. It's, it's an act, because I agree with you. I, even Charles Manson, is, he created evil acts, but he's not evil. He just do, doesn't act out on his good. Right. Or well, he and, hasn't, and he some didn't and at the time. And some people's behavior is mostly evil. It's just... <laughs> You know, it's gradations. Yeah. Um, like, I, I, I deal with plenty of people who try to tell me that I think I've forgiven that asshole. Oh, well, see, that's right there. You 
That's it. <laughs> Forget it. That's what you I'm saying. You just axed it out. That's what I'm because saying. Because you haven't forgiven if you're still calling him an exactly. asshole. Exactly. <laughs> and so that's that's the word evil. It's like yeah. we use these kind of words too much to demonize other people. Yeah, to I de- agree with you. I, 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 to defend yeah. our kind of harshness. And I don't even like saying bad, a bad person, because people aren't bad. It's a behavior. It's but always be, a behavior. The, the guy who took your money behaved badly. Yeah, he did. And he probably cooperated with evil at that moment. Right. right. That's a good way to put it. I mean, that's, that's yeah. w- again, one of the things... Interpretation. Well, one of the things that we've tried to do with our Forgiveness Project is teach people to talk about this stuff without riling themselves up. Oh, yeah. Because, and you know immediately, from, from my interpretation, that when someone gets riled up, then you know they haven't really forgiven. They're still holding that anger. Of course. You know, when, when somebody asks me, like, how do I know if I've forgiven? Which, which is a, a yeah, great question. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I say, well, just talk about whatever it is for a minute. And if you can talk about it for a minute without raising your blood pressure, you've probably forgiven. You will probably notice if you haven't forgiven that within like 10 seconds, you're starting to talk a little faster and you're getting a little tight. (laughs) And then the words are starting to come out that there's something wrong with them. You haven't forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you're putting the blame. No blame. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> and then, again, blame is essential at the beginning. When you are f- trying to figure out what happened, you need to know who did what to who. It's just you Do can't... Do you think s- that's blame? I mean... Well, blame is I'm suffering because of something that you did. That's what blame is. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. For a while, it's true. And then it stops being true. For a while, the truth is, I'm suffering because of something that you did. After a while, it's, I'm suffering because I haven't figured out how to be a pleasant human being in a world where people do what you did, which is different. Yeah, it is. I haven't figured it out, which is different than you're at fault. But it's perfectly okay when it happens to say they're at fault because that's part of grieving, being angry, being confused. Because you need uh, you need uh, an object to to be able to grieve from. That's it. You do. We need something. Otherwise, to how do you grow? How do you even have any point of reference? Um, there's no argument from me. Okay. Well, so that that made me look at things a little different. That's yeah. good. I mean, this is what this is all about. We we've been teaching this stuff for 17 years. With, through 16. Stanford, or have well, you? Well, it started as my dissertation ah. to graduate from Stanford, okay. and then it went to a number of research projects at Stanford and other places, and now I do teach classes at Stanford on forgiveness, and now there's some stray research projects that we do, like stray, uh, stray. Said? Like I don't, I don't do them all the time. Oh, um, okay. About two years ago. I did a project where we brought people to Stanford from Sierra Leone who had had um, problems or issues from that civil war. Mm. Next spring, summer, I'm going to go up to uh, the native population of Canada and do some forgiveness work with them way up near the North Pole. The, are they Indian? Yeah. In, yeah. The Inuit mm-hmm. Indian. Yeah, and so I still do little projects like that. Um, but the majority of what I do now is teach. Teach people to forgive. It's like a skill. You can just learn it. So in your own life, <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you do that in your own life? Do you feel like you, you have forgiven yourself and forgiven the people in your life that you feel free about that? Well, you know, Personally, I never had that much trouble with forgiving myself. I mean, I, that I can't explain. The whole forgiveness project began because a very close friend of mine betrayed me. And I was... Was m- this when you... How old were you? I mean... Uh, was how this, old was I? Were you back in New York? It was or about 20... You? Maybe not quite 20... About 20 years ago. Oh, okay. I, I lived out here. I was already in graduate school. Yeah. 
And a very close friend of mine betrayed me. And I was miserable mm. and angry. And I mean, they really betrayed me. Mm. It was just about as close a friend as I had. Mm. And the betrayal was complete. And the trust was right. broken. And so for a few years, I was a pretty unhappy camper. And I, I lost the ability to trust people. Mm. And it was not pretty. And I was not pretty. And then my partner like looked at me and said, Fred, you know, like you ain't the person I wanted to be with now. I mean, you know, I love you, but yeah. you're letting this get to you. And and she basically gave me a wake up call, you know, like <laughs> um not that she was threatening to leave, yeah. but I'm not happy with this. Like yeah. I didn't marry a grouchy, bummed out pain in the butt. <laughs> and that was like a kick enough for me to figure out like what the heck can I do? And one of the things I figured out that I could do was I could forgive them. But it took me years. And then when I decided to forgive them, that's when this all began. I figured, well, ooh, that's interesting. Makes a difference. I can do it. And so then, that was the impetus for you to start the forgiveness. Right, right, after I, right after that occurred, I had to come up with a doctoral dissertation. Perfect time. So I used what I did and tried to do a study on it, and it was successful. So, and here you I've are. had other experiences. Um, in, in my marriage, there were definitely some issues with my wife's family that were like... Um, I think we all have those. Oh, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you an embarrassing story? If you like it. Well, I mean, it's not, it I mean, it's so long ago, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, no, it's no. It's not that, probably 15 years ago. I, I was teaching a class, and I was so frustrated that I remember talking about my wife's mother in the class because I was really not pleased with my wife's mother. This is so long ago. It's like ancient history, yeah, all right, done. right. And, and I complained about it and then, you know, dropped it. And then my wife and I are traveling somewhere and somebody from the class saw me and it's like some airport in the middle of the United States. It could have been St. Louis or something. Mm. They come up to me, see my wife and say, is she the one with the bad mother? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> So that was that was the end of that. Yeah. I, I, I no longer used my classes as personal therapy. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're aware of it. <laughs> oh my God! So oh. that's an example of not having quite forgiven. Yeah. <sighs> I know there's stories uh, uh, or experiences that we could all share around family and friends and. Yeah. So getting back to, getting back to the the wealth and, and currency money situation, I, you know, I I talk about it, raising the awareness mm -hmm. around the relationship, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> forgiveness is a huge piece of it. Because, and you talk about that in your work. Uh, I well, I have. Okay. I don't okay. talk about it all the time, but I integrate it in because sure. the biggest thing that I talk about is unconditional love. I've, I've heard you say that, okay. Unconditional love, and, and forgiveness is part of that, it because for you, is. for one, for me, for you, for everyone, to be able to, to live in that unconditional love, yes. which the first thing I do, is tell people, is to write it on your mirror, on your windows, wherever, put it on, on sticky, you know, put it wherever you can see it, multiple, multiple, t somebody said, uh, forget who it was, Maybe it was Louise Hay. Hmm. Said you need to see it like 300 times a day, which I How don't many? know. 300. Oh my gosh. And it's, wow. Yeah, that's when I heard that. It's like, wait. And I say, look at it as many times a day for at least 28 days so it gets in your unconscious right. it, mind. It's true. That's you know, true. so then when you come from that, that's, you know, not being judgmental, mm -hmm. forgiving, because mm -hmm. forgiving is a big part of that yes, to it free is. your heart and your mind. And, and stop criticizing. Mm. When you have... So, no judgments, forgive, and stop criticizing. Yes. Okay. Those are three huge components. And yeah, there's other things, but those are the huge things that are part of unconditional love. And when you can do that from yourself... Absolutely. 
you know, to yourself, from yourself, right. then you can do it with others. Well, and uh, the only place I would push back on that is there are some people who are so good at forgiving themselves, but don't forgive anybody else. And you got to be really careful with thinking that forgiving yourself comes first. That it doesn't. doesn't. It no, does not. You've got to forgive the, the other person or persons. Well, sometimes there are people out there who are phenomenal about forgiving themselves for things they shouldn't forgive. But if you cross well, now, them... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, to me, is a contradiction in terms because everything is forgivable. Right. Even that couple that, I mean, that man and that woman that were at their forgiveness event, right. that he, I, I mean, the murder. No, I understand you know, that. I mean, that woman gave the murder. Right. murder. Right. Everyone is forgiven. Right. Uh, well, what I'm saying is if, if let's, say I, let's say I was the one who took your money, okay? I, I, I know people who would make excuses for that because it's their behavior. But if somebody stole like 10 bucks from them, they'd be all over them and unforgiving. That's what I'm getting at. Like, there are a lot of people out there who are too generous with themselves about forgiveness and not generous enough to other people. Hmm. You, you hear people well, make excuses a lot. Well, for there their are bad a lot behavior. of excuses. I know I hear them too. For their bad behavior. Yeah. And I don't, I don't agree with that. But, I, know. I know you don't. I mean, it, it's, you know. But, you know, it, it's justifying and it's not. Right, that's what it is. It's, it's justifying, justifying and it's exactly. not, that's not always the right place to be. So, so, so help, me, help me help you about wealth. Like when you, when you saw me speak up there at Forgiveness Day, what was your thought about how this conversation could go towards wealth? Well, I thought... You know, I, I thought you, because of what you have done mm -hmm. and what you're doing around forgiveness, mm -hmm. because that is a big piece around money. Yes. Because we have, uh, I think on some degree, everybody has bad experiences with money. Everybody does. No question. Everybody does. No question. And it's all relative to the amounts and, you know, it, whatever. But I thought, you know, because my mind's always going. <laughs> I thought, I thought. Your mind's always going. Yes, my mind is always <laughs> going. So I thought, and my heart and my mind, I always want right. to try to keep that in balance. And I thought, you know, <laughs> I think he would be a great person to bring on my show okay. to talk about forgiveness around money. Forgiveness around money, Because yes. since I, I focus on the relationship with money okay. and healing that, because our planet, our whole planet, needs to be healed there's no oh my question god about that. so it's like no one is deep talking about it and and and, and doing this okay. so that's why i'm doing this this okay. is my purpose that. and yeah. passion to do this and that's I why i thought you would be okay. a wonderful person to be on here to share your experience okay. and and your teaching around so the word. word the word that i would almost substitute not substitute forgiveness but i would use instead of forgiveness is kindness that um, there's so much harshness and so much nastiness about people who cheat us in any way. I mean, you had that experience. Mm -hmm. I've had that experience. So one of the ways that you can language forgiveness is, again, be kinder to yourself yes. about making a mistake. Yes, absolutely. Or not even, it's even okay. I mean, I've met people who... I actually know somebody who got cheated by Bernie Madoff. And it's even understandable to say that you invested money in somebody who was questionable because you wanted to make more money. Yeah. I mean, well, and you thought he, he knew what he was doing and his history. And, and you blah, took blah, a blah. risk. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a goodwill and a gentleness and a kindness that we can bring to our languaging of these things that will manifest forgiveness. What, one of the things that I've seen that gets people stuck is they have no idea what forgiveness is. Oh, and they yeah. don't know that it's, it's, it's shown by how we talk about it. That's how it's shown. Forgiveness doesn't, I mean, it may exist, but it's, it's in all words. Right. 
Right. So if, in our heart. And in our in hearts, our but you can't show your heart as easily as you yeah, can right. show your words. Yeah, and, and we express from our heart whether we realize it, because it's emotion. It's There's the no feeling. question. So it, like you were saying earlier about how you talk about some, just like that, that person that contradicted themselves, you know, that I forgive that asshole, you know, right. that just wipes it out. It wipes it out. <laughs> it just wipes it out. And I've said that it's possible that if that's still how you're referring to your dad, you may have some forgiveness work left to do. Yeah, absolutely. It's so possible. You're right. The languaging, the linguistics, the words that come out of your mind. And your... that's where I would focus, is that when, when you find yourself saying unkind, mistrusting, resentful, jealous speech, yes. it's the speech that we can most quickly turn around. Absolutely. Because this can take a long time to get to. Yeah. Well, but I'm sorry is a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wish I hadn't said that. Or I'm sorry if it hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. Or even I've had examples of where I've seen speech that nobody thought would hurt somebody come back to hurt them. Because we say things, then we don't realize their impact. That's why being aware and conscious that's exactly That's right. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Is being conscious. So when, if you're wanting, like, the simplest explanation of what the for practice of forgiveness is, it's one, calming yourself down. So if you're like this, take a deep breath, you know, open your heart. Physical practices to unclench. Two, yeah. speak <clears throat> more kindly. Mm -hmm. Change the story. Don't tell a victim story. Tell a different kind of story. I mean, these are the most simple things. Three is don't expect to always get what you want. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Mm -mm. And you get what you need? You get what you need. I <laughs> hope so. But the, and the last one is count your blessings. Yeah. Because Gratitude. as much as things have harmed us, they're still remarkable. So what it's I all in how you look at it. I think maybe not all, but a good percentage of it is. But like all the bad things that happen to you, or uh, speaking from my own experience, all the bad things. You know, it, if I hold on to that negative energy and that ne those negative thoughts. Yes. That is where it's like, wait a minute, right. this is not working. Exactly. This is not going right. to work for me. Right. And I and I apply that I attempt to apply that in my consciousness and everything that I do good for and you I, I, I do attempt to right. do that it, I mean I can't say it's a hundred percent because I'm I human I don't know anybody for whom it is that, yeah exactly no. so you know and then you know things come up but that's how we grow right that's how we grow. that's what it's you know it's like I always say the, the pearl and, and dr. Michael Beckwith says the rub Right. But the pearl, the oyster, you know, the oyster gets the right. sand and, the, and it's irritant and it's... The, uh, the, the only place that I have struggled with that is, and, and I'm, there's no argument in me about that, I have met people in terrible chronic pain from like a car accident mm. or a burn that they've had. And I don't know. I mean, yes, attitude plays a part in it, but it also just hurts. But how long do you hold on to that hurt, you know? That, that's... I mean, hold on, yes. And there's still the physical experience of pain. Yeah, are, now are you saying like a burn victim? Like uh, my, my sister-in-law's brother-in-law experienced Agent Orange. Ooh. And he actually in front of oh, his... Oh, he had the... Yes, and, 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 his, and he actually threw fire on himself. He put gasoline and he caught himself on fire. Why? He wanted to commit suicide. Oh, and, and it's an effect from the, the oh, from, Agent oh, Orange. Oh. Yeah, and you know, Michael, he's a sweetheart. I, I mean, you know, he's doing the best he can. And, and it's disfigured him. He's had multiple surgeries. I know. I and, 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 the, and people, especially in America, are so harsh on the way we look. I know that. They're so harsh. It's disgusting. I know. You know, it, 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 to me, you know, so it's like, you know, I bless his soul. And he just, his wife was hung in with him for many, many years. Oh, she gave it a best she, shot? she gave it a best shot. They divorced, like, last year. Because she couldn't take it she anymore. She couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. And, you know, anyway, it's, 
how you know when that happens it's like you have to live with that the rest of your life mm -hmm. and it's like that's all i'm saying but it's it's working through it and how you know that's a hard i mean i can't imagine that's what i'm saying i can't imagine and so i mean you just want to be very careful that there are certain people whose pain and suffering are more than we can anticipate yeah. and at the same time people have come through almost anything with dignity and like kindness well, but and be, don't you think it being kind to yourself is the mo is really important? Do I think that's the most important? Well, no. I said really important. It's really important, but so is being kind to others. But I mean, when you're kind to yourself, well, you know, I, I, I come from when you're kind to yourself, yeah. you, you automatically are kind to others. Hmm. Okay. And maybe, maybe it's, it could be a gender different thing. I don't know, you know. I mean, I think it's universal. There, when, when, you, when, when you were young, because we're not that far apart in age, there was a book called I'm Okay, You're Okay. Oh, yeah. My mother handed that book to me. Oh, did she? When I was in high school. Okay. <laughs> because she needed it more than me. Of course. But I read it, and I, you know, this is wonderful. Well, what I'm so saying. So now practice what you preach. You okay. Know? So what me, I'm saying is some people's basic script is I'm okay but you're not okay. Yeah, Those people yeah. don't forgive other people easily. Right. Yeah. But there are people whose basis script is, I'm not okay, but you're fine. Those people yeah. don't forgive themselves easily. So <sighs> we can have different scripts mm. that have us come up with different difficulties in the world. So let's wake up on both sides of that spectrum and, and be free of all I'm that. I'm okay and you're yes, okay. Yes, absolutely. That's what absolutely. we're hoping for. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That was <laughs> wonderful. That's a good way to, our time is out. Wonderful. But I, that's a good, wonderful thing to close <laughs> on. Thank you so much, Fred, for sharing your experience and your intellect and your being with us. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. I'll leave you with this. Never give up on your pursuit of your purpose and your passion, and even if you don't know what that is, work with integrity and have a positive attitude wherever you work and first with your family and friends. Be grateful for what you have, who you are, and where you've come from. Be grateful for your freedom and eat healthy. Good nutrition feeds the mind and the body temple, and don't forget to keep moving your body by working out. Feed your spirituality with meditation and prayer, with unconditional love. And firstly, love yourself unconditionally and share your abundance and wealth with others. Thanks for watching. Please support Marin TV that brings these messages. And remember, when fear knocks, let faith answer the door. All of you viewers out there from Marin County, can you please contact me? And let us know who you are and what city you live in as a viewer. This is really important for the survival of Marin TV and our shows. I will give you my email address and phone number at the bottom of the screen and in the credits. Bye for now. Until next time.